you're looking at my survival security control panel. It has a light-up display that not only detects when a wild predator or human intruder is nearby, but it also pinpoints their location as well. It's the first of its kind, and you're seeing it right here. Trail south. The best part is that it's super easy to make. All you need is some glow sticks, rat traps, and twine. If you want to see how I did it, stay tuned. Perimeter alarm systems have been around for a while now. They can be quite effective and simple to construct in a survival situation. A perimeter alarm is designed to give an alert when a predator is near, providing the user ample time for either a fight or flight response. The alert can either be a couple tin cans that bash together, a firecracker that goes off, a pair of branches that are triggered to slap together, a glow stick that lights up, etc. Basically anything that can get the attention of the user. Having an early detection system in place allows the user to rest a little easier, especially at night, knowing that the alarm system will keep a vigilant watch. But although bushcraft alarm systems give an alert when the perimeter has been breached, they are still unable to pinpoint exactly where the breach has happened. That is, until now. I have developed a discrete glow stick alarm system that actually detects and displays where the breach came from. I call it bushcraft radar. Although this method sounds high-tech, all you need is several rat traps, twine, glow sticks, duct tape, and nails. All of these materials are great items to keep in your survival pack anyway, since they have many different uses beyond a camp alarm system. I started by fastening a rough cut board to a nearby stump, then I nailed four rat traps to the board. Since most people don't have access to lumber in a survival situation, nailing rat traps to a dead tree or log will suffice, or anything that will keep the rat traps secure really. And if you don't have nails, the traps can easily be tied down with the twine. Each rat trap represents a different section of the perimeter. Welcome to Security HQ. What used to be a stump is about to be transformed into a control panel with a light up display. Next, I labeled each rat trap with the area that its section of perimeter will be in, and its direction. Swamp North, Bridge East, Trail South, Hardwoods West. I will also designate a specific color to each quadrant, but I'll get to that in a moment. I attached one end of my twine to the control panel, and I began to make my perimeter with it. Keep watching, because I'm getting to the good part now. I made sure not to wrap the twine around anything, but instead I loosely draped it over the odd tree branch as I went along. That's because the twine needs the freedom to be able to slide back and forth without getting caught up on anything. I'm sure that heavy fishing line would probably be a great alternative for that reason. Ideally, I tried to keep the twine at about waist height from the ground. This is probably the best height for detecting bears, wolves, moose, deer, people, cougars, etc. To help you picture how I strung the perimeter, I decided to draw you this little top-down map. The campfire represents my campsite, which is where my security control panel is located. Starting from the control panel, I began stringing up my line, making sure that it was tight enough to remain waist height above the ground while still a little loose. After I had strung a quarter of my perimeter up, I tied it off at a tree. This completed the green quadrant. Then I strung another line from the control panel in the same initial direction, but then I turned right. Again, I stopped once I had walked one quarter of the perimeter, and I tied the line off at a tree. This completed the blue quadrant. For the orange quadrant, I left from the opposite side of the control panel, and I tied off at the same tree that I ended the green line at. And finally, I strung the red line from the same side of the control panel, and I tied it off at the same tree that the blue line ended at. The perimeter was now complete, with a diameter of at least 200 feet, which is pretty impressive considering that this perimeter was set up in a dense cedar bush. However, I do believe that I could have made my perimeter even larger if I wanted to, and it could certainly be made a lot bigger if it were in a more open forest or field. Anyway, I connected each line to the trigger of its corresponding rat trap.
Then I attached a different color of glow stick to each rat trap using duct tape. Green for the northern swamp, orange for the eastern bridge, red for the southern trail, and blue for the hardwood stand to the west. Now all I had to do was carefully set the traps. Remember, if a rat trap is strong enough to kill rats and break heavy glow sticks, think how painful it would be on your fingers. Ow. Yep, it's painful. Security HQ is now fully operational. But since I didn't have time to wait around for a wolf to trip my perimeter, I decided to test it myself. Everything worked perfectly. The control panel tripped and it accurately displayed where I was. Another great thing about this alarm system is that it's easy to reset. All I had to do was replace the used glow stick with a fresh one and reset the trap. And Security HQ was back in business within seconds. When night came, my friend, who was with me, walked through a random part of the perimeter to see if the control panel was continuing to work as it should. The bushcraft radar worked flawlessly. I was pleasantly surprised how well everything was working. Again, the control panel tripped and it displayed that my friend was near the bridge, which he was. The wolves gradually drew closer throughout the course of filming that night, and I began to wonder if Security HQ was about to be tested for real. Anyway, we did a few more tests, and I was happy with the results. Everything went off without a hitch. The great thing is that the slapping sound of the rat trap is loud enough to alert the user, but to the intruder, it just sounds like a twig quietly snapping underfoot. That's because the sound becomes muffled over any sort of distance through the trees. For the next test, my friend went out once again to trip a random part of the perimeter. But this time, I would try to find him based on where the control panel said he was. Hardwoods West. I set off to find him. By the way, I'd like to take a moment to make a shout out to the good folks at Through Night for setting me up with one of their flashlights to use on my many adventures in the bush. I do a lot of work at night and I needed a dependable LED flashlight that was portable yet powerful enough to make episodes like these possible. And it has sure come in handy. This one is model TN4A, and it comes with this great holster that sits nicely next to the knife on my belt. It's over 1000 lumens in brightness at its highest setting, with four brightness settings in total, low, medium, high, and firefly, which is great to use when you need to read a map or something at night but don't want to destroy your night vision. It's impact resistant, waterproof, and runs off AA batteries, which I think is a huge plus. Anyway, I'm really happy with it, and it outperforms all the other flashlights that I currently have. The only negative thing that I have to say about it is that I wished it lasted a bit longer on a single charge, but after several hours of solid use on a single set of batteries, I can't really fault it all that much. Anyway, let's get back to the action. I was quickly able to find my friend based on what the control panel had told me. Overall, I'm super happy with how well my bushcraft radar worked. I think it would be a great thing for landowners to use as well to see if any big animals have passed through their property since they last checked it. The possibilities are really endless with this type of setup. What I love about this design is that the control panel is able to give you a lot of helpful information when you need it most. All you have to do is learn to read what's being displayed to you. Take this scenario for example. Let's say you're sitting at your campfire and a predator trips the green quadrant. 
If nothing else happens on the control panel within the next few minutes, then you know that the animal was either startled by the line and turned away, or that it is still within your perimeter. However, in the case that you're sitting next to a fire, or if you begin to make loud noises, the animal will probably have turned away. But if within the next few minutes another quadrant gets triggered, then you know that the animal has probably exited your perimeter at another location, and you can breathe a sigh of relief. But if two or more quadrants are triggered almost at the same time, then you are likely dealing with multiple animals. This is probably not a good sign. And if all four quadrants are triggered at once, then the wolves have come and you are surrounded. At this time, you might feel inspired to start quoting the 23rd Psalm. <laughs> 